Right. Well, hello everybody. My name is Pam Skelton, and um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about um, um, Chernobyl Mon Amour, a short film that that that, um, that I've recently made. The film was um, the, the, the the material of the film was shot in 1993 and 1995 on a um, a visit to the Chernobyl plant, but also to the hospital and um, part of a bigger trip to um, to Ukraine, Poland and Lithuania, um, where I was really kind of looking at the aftermath of World War Two and, and and the Holocaust. Um, Chernobyl Monomore is is the third part or the third work that I've made in you know, from the footage that I shot in those those years. Most personal, it it follows my personal um, feelings, experience, um, record of the journey around the Chernobyl plant, um, nuclear plant in 1993. In 1995, I returned and focused on the hospital and the liquidators, with which was part of a program, an exhibition at Camera Work London um, on the 10th anniversary of the Chernobyl accident. So it was shown in yeah, on in 1996 uh, at Camera Work. And it was curated by Helen Sloan, who also um, came on the journey with me in 1995. Thanks to Vladimir Babeshko, who was then the director of the Institute um, of Clinical Radiology in Kiev. I think that the vulnerability that I felt both as a human being visiting such a uh, a notoriously disturbing sight for the first time and then going back and visiting the hospital from which um, which resulted in a, se a series of interviews that, that some of the liquidators agreed to share their experiences but Hiroshima Monomore brings together another disaster, the Hiroshima, um, the bombing of Hiroshima in 1945. It links to my work, my minor work in relation to this astonishing film directed by Alan Resney and with a film script by Margarita Duras, who is one of my most favorite authors, powerful authors ever, and the music of George Pusco. It brings together the our reluctance or our inability to actually kind of re-enter the space of these disasters, but the necessity to try to do so. What it lends to the work and why I thought it was important to use was to try to incorporate the vulnerability and the, the continuation of disasters in a way that can bring a more personal perspective to it. So the protagonist, the female protagonist in Hiroshima Mon Amour, she visits the hospital, she visits the museums, she feels deeply involved uh, and affected by her experience. On the other hand, her Japanese lover tells her that she knows nothing, she knows nothing of Hiroshima. 
and you know, it's it's that dynamic between you know the visitor and the actual event, and the history that's that interwoven into the film, uh, and that's that's really it. This is a black wormwood. Or palin. Palin. Sure, palin. No. No. Okay. no what? Uh, War exposure to. Uh, 200 uh, millirentgen per hour. It was a huge dose. Theoretically, it was assumed that all of them win. Safe, you can touch it. The mushroom, yeah. yeah. The mushroom. Yeah. What is the poison of mushroom? Maybe, maybe a little bit. Uh, this is a black wormwood. Oh, Palin. Palin. Sure, Palin. It's in Chernobyl. No. No. Hey. No what? Deuxième jour, dit l'histoire, je ne l'ai pas inventé. Dès le deuxième jour, des espèces animales ont ressurgi des de la terre et des cendres. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, 
Je n'ai rien vu à Hiroshima. Rien. J'ai tout vu. Tout. Ainsi, l'hôpital, je l'ai vu. J'en suis sûr. L'hôpital existe à Hiroshima. Comment aurais-je pu éviter de le voir Tu n'as pas vu d'hôpital à Hiroshima. Tu n'as rien vu à Hiroshima. Thank you ever so much, Pam, for this uh, journey back to our history. It's on the on Sunday, on the 10th of October, we're going to have a dedicated panel discussion regarding reintegration and respond and the responders. So we're going to be we're going to invite very interesting people who were real first responders in the tragedy. We're going to we're going to have. Um, the people from the hospitals who were receiving those first patients. So we're going to be discussing those times, how difficult it was and how their life went on after this. So on the 10th of October, I would encourage everybody to visit our discussion. It's going to be real, really interesting. We're going to see unique people. And now we will talk with Pam about their project, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So some technical problems with the start. And thank you very much for your project and your participation. Thank you. I think that there's a problem with the sound. Uh, it's not syncing. Um, so I'm sorry that the film, um, that the sound um, um, was kind of a bit out of sync. I think I'm a bit out of sync as well. Um, maybe it's because I'm in London. I don't know, um, but I'm yeah, I'm I'm sorry that it's not as good as it should be for you. But thank you very very much for inviting me, and I will certainly tune in on on the tenth of October. Um, I don't really know, kind of. Well, I mean, to give you an idea of you know where I. I'm coming from. I'm I'm interested in in multidirectional memory in bringing histories that shouldn't be that that should that, that have have connections onto one page. Not necessarily kind of not mingling them, but kind of making references to them because so many of us see history as, as being um, inside a bubble, separated from the rest of history. So history, kind of memory, forgetting is, is on my agenda. And I've made work with projects such as um, uh, Conspiracy Dwellings, looking at kind of the references, um, working with the Stasi archive, um, mapping the, um, the, the town of Erfurt for its conspiracy dwellings. My work um, is not very new media-ish, and um, Chernobyl Mon Amour um, was shot on a handheld camera um, going round the Chernobyl 
on the tour of the Chernobyl plant. It's old Hi8 footage, and that's what I use to, to create this little film. Um, in the earlier works um, that I made for, for camera work and kind of showed in, in a variety of other places around the 2000s and first decade of the 2000s was the kind of his, the interviews with the liquidators and a journey around Chernobyl um, with a, a French narrator called um, a friend and translator Bernard Bernard, Bernard Hofner, um, who created a really beautiful um, narrative to, to accompany that, that journey. Um, I found it quite an emotional experience looking back at the rushes and, and working with them. I don't it's, this is actually the first time that I've used rough, rough rushes, kind of un, unusable ones, really. Um, but I did want to, to, to communicate the vulnerability that I mentioned in, in kind of er, earlier. I and not protect myself. I think that it's interesting to for an artist to dare to show um, some of that, you know, the uncertainty with which, you know, we, we approach projects. I've also done on this uh, um, kind of work around Holocaust and Palestine, um, um, Holocaust and, and Nakba trying to reconnect some of these, these histories. I would benefit from, from working with, um, with, with more people, you know, who have better technical skills than me. I'm, I'm a painter, really, in the past. But, um, you know, since, since the, the mid-90s, you know, I've been working with video on these kind of these historical um, kind of art documentaries, I suppose, you know, um, as a as a single kind of as a as a as an artist, but, you know, without without a, a team. So I'm certainly not a filmmaker. Is there anything else that you'd like? Um, to ask, uh, or you can help focus me. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, you, you say that you are wo was working. Вы сказали, что вы стена в Холокост. Yeah. Yes, no. uh, and also you are working with the Chernobyl topic. Uh, uh, can, can you uh, say something about uh, the sim similarities of these uh, topics? Um, what what made what one of the reasons why I wanted to go to Chernobyl um, was because my um my great grandparents on both sides um were came from kind of you know that area um and the journey into the journey in in, in 93 was very much about seeing the sites seeing eastern europe um and what the aftermath of, of, of World War II and the Holocaust actually looked like. Because, you know, us living in, in, in England, um, living in Western Europe, you know, we, there was no chance of, of going there. So, you know, I kind of grew up with, with a, an imagination of, of, what, um, of what Vilnius, you know, might look like, you know, what, um, Spola might look like in, 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 in Ukraine, 
um, what L Lviv might look like. Um, and everything was totally different. So it totally blew my mind and it really kind of changed my practice. When on the journey, what, my time in, in Kiev, um, you know, I also had heard about Babi Yar. I'd visited um, Shpola. I saw, I visited Chernobyl that had that contained in the past um, many synagogues. It, there was a huge Jewish community there. Um, and, you know, some of these, these in interlinking histories um, were of interest or of great interest. And as the years have gone by, those interests have become more manifest. So. The, the Chernobyl disaster has not got a direct reference point to World War II or the histories, but yet it is, it, you know, it is a part of the aftermath of the Soviet Union that we're experiencing um, those histories. Uh, we've been talk, you've been talking about all these, uh, you know, great speakers have been communicating what's happened in the past, what's happening now. And I think that we need to, to bring these histories a little bit more together. Um, and, you know, my two visits to, to Kiev and the Chernobyl power plant, you know, were actually a part of that, that journey um, of making these links, you know, so one day I'm at the Chernobyl power station. The next day, I'm in, in Spain. Uh, thank you very much for your... Uh, thank you very much for your uh, you, speech. Uh, it's uh, nice to meet you.